the magic of merging with the amazing Christian Angiel, where he will take us through Power, B Power Query joins in data flows. So I will stop sharing and over to you, Christian. Thank you very much, Sue. Thank you for the nice words and thanks for having me again. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, this is my second talk at the Devon and Cornwall uh, user group. So uh, hopefully uh, after this session, you will know at least one more thing in addition of what you already know about uh, Power Query. So let's go uh, through the uh, session today and see what's uh, everything about it. So please raise your hand if you owned one of these in the chat, please. Or this. Or this. <clears throat> what do all have in common? They are obsolete, right? Technology moved on and uh, let them in the past. But who remembers the first aha moment uh, and the feeling when they finally mastered VLOOKUP and wanted mm. to get a t-shirt like this? So I'm pretty sure uh, it was wow at the time, but is it still relevant in fabric? Well, technology also evolved and we have to keep up with it, right? Well, after this session, I would like you to be able to say this regarding joints in Dataflow Gen 2. I have a... <laughs> For whoever knows the movie, he, he knows what I'm talking about. A few words about me and let's move to the session. My name is Christian. I'm a project management professional turned into a data guy and uh, working as a link between two worlds, business and IT. With uh, more than 20 years in data in different roles, I was fascinated when I discovered Power Query and Power Pivot back in 2014, and then Power BI in 2015. I'm holding several Microsoft certifications, and um, I love getting insights from data and uh, then using those insights to solve real, uh, real world business problems. I'm the founder of uh, Romania Power BI and Modern Excel user group and uh, have been recognized as a Microsoft most valuable professional uh, two years ago. So let's go quickly through the um, session plan for today. We'll start with a short over overview of Merge in Power Query, uh, where they are available, pre presenting uh, all the join kinds available and mentioning some extra joints. Um, we will not focus on where these queries are loaded inside data flows because this could be an entire different session, but uh, we'll be talking about uh, what joints are, where are they useful. We'll show a bit of theory about the uh, join kinds and uh, what each join is uh, doing. Then we will present some extra joints, the full anti-join and cross joints. The, then uh, my favorite part, the demo part, uh, presenting all all type of uh, joints and some fuzzy matches and uh, some use cases. Then if we have time, a short Q&A in the end. Uh, if not, please uh, post your questions during the chat and uh, Sue, please stop me whenever it's uh, you feel are uh, you feel it's necessary. Okay. So for those of you coming. Let's define what are joints. For those of uh, you coming from the IT or database world, these are the well-known joints in SQL with some extra options and particular properties or capabilities. Uh, but for those of us, uh, including myself, coming from the business or Excel world, these are the VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP lately that we can relate to. Well, joints are the process of combining two queries or tables using merge in Power Query based on common fields. Uh, Dataflow Gen 2, where Power Query Online is available, can be really helpful into getting data loaded in different locations. This operation is essential for data modeling, cleaning and uh, analysis, and the implications of not doing the right joints can be significant. One thing to note about uh, uh, joints the merge operation in Power Query, so the merge feature, supports query folding, which means that uh, these merge operations 
will be transformed into a native SQL query automatically. Um, and it sending the uh, native query to the data source and uh, make the data source uh, executing it. So why are we using the uh, merge operation? Basically, there are three operations that needs to be done. We can enrich data, increase or reduce the number of rows. And we'll see more about it in um, during the, the demos. And uh, as I said, there are some um, joint types available uh, using UI. There are six joint types available in UI, plus two additional uh, joint types using the M language, and uh, we'll go over it. Using the user interface, <clears throat> everybody should uh, probably saw this merge button here on the on the home ribbon. And the, even this button has two additional options, is merging the query uh, inside the current query or merging as a new query. And we'll, we'll show it uh, a bit in the demo. But you will find uh, different uh, terms in different places when learning about joints, like uh, primary table and related table, or top table and the bottom table. Well, you will also find left table and right table, just like this. And just to make it clear for everybody, which is the left table and the right table, I designed this uh, slide especially to make it very clear which is the left one and the right one. Probably you will hear me a lot during the demo, uh, left table and right table. So we know the top table is the left table and the bottom table is the right table. So, <clears throat> specifically to Dataflow Gen 2, there are some uh, options or uh, some capabilities, and uh, one of them is this one, column pair suggestion. And you will see during the demo, on the top right, we, we get a light bulb uh, with suggestions only for column pair mapping. So we will not uh, get suggestions for fuzzy matching configuration or uh, all other type of suggestions. It's only the AI capability, the small AI capability for column pair suggestions is only regarding the column names that can be um, mapped together, let's say it uh, uh, like this. Then another specific thing on um, joints in uh, data flows, only expand operation is uh, available. Aggregate, uh, the one that it's uh, available in Power BI desktop, is not yet available. And uh, <clears throat> this option will be added by the end of the year. Hopefully, let's say it like this. Because we've seen uh, before things that uh, were postponed. And another thing that I really love inside the uh, Dataflow Gen 2 is the query step icons and the dependency view. Uh, hopefully this will uh, land in Power BI Desktop eventually, and this is one of the features that was postponed at least for two years now, let's say like this, but hopefully they will come. For now, we have them in uh, Dataflow Gen 2 and it's, it's okay, I love it. So quickly, the join types, I told you there are six join types in uh, uh, using the user interface. The left outer join, right outer join, full outer join, inner, left anti-join, and right anti-join. We will go into details during the demo, but I just wanted to uh, present them to you. And then there are, as I said, there are two joins uh, not available using the UI left semi-join and right semi-join. And I will also explain them during the, the demo. But we can have some extra joins, like the full anti-join, where we can see uh, all the differences between the left and the right table, and we'll go into details during the, the demo, the cross joins and some self-joins. So uh, 
enough with all this talking and let's head to the demo part just like uh, patrick would see it right as i have a lot of uh, a lot of things to cover uh, as i said uh, well i'm not sure if i already said it but uh, i said that uh, we will not focus on the um, where the queries are loaded so i've pre-prepared some demos and we'll go through those ones in in the interest of time because i know sue needs to be at the yoga so we need to finish on time with this so let's i'm addicted christian what can i say <laughs> i know i know this is why i'm trying to be as efficient as possible but so, you're doing amazing let me show you what we are, what I have prepared, and uh, uh, explain how the entire demo uh, will go. So here I have a raw data connection, which is actually a connection to a, a SQL database in Azure, and I'm I have a, a schema starting with PQ merge there, just uh, so I have all the samples together, and from this one, I have two tables, so I, I was just referencing uh, this raw data connection, and uh, I went to two tables, one with uh, fruits, having fruit superpowers and their secret identities. And in order to uh, see uh, the, the beauty of uh, Power Query Online, uh, let me show you this one. Uh, yeah, like this, the dependency view. This is what I love most here. So uh, uh, hopefully we will have it in uh, in Power Query. So I have a raw data connection query and I just reference it and uh, I went down into two different tables. So I have a table with fruit superpower. And in this one, uh, I want to get from this second table where I also have a, a column with fruits, their secret identities. Well, how can we do it? As I said, using the merge button here in the menu, this one, we have two options. Either we can merge the queries directly here like this and go with uh, secret identity, selecting the common columns here we already see that the default type is the left outer join here, and we get a, an estimation already by Power Query Online that we have uh, seven out of 10 um, records matched. And uh, I will leave it like this at the uh, beginning, but as you can see, the entire um, lineage is not very clear anymore. So I don't like to do it like this, this is why I will delete this step and do it as I will uh, as I have all the other demos and this is why I'm showing you now I will just reference this query the left query move it in the correct folder disable staging and call it first step is to change the name left join well in order to do a left join as I showed you now I can do the merge query from here, I can select the secret identity, select the common fields. So I'm selecting fruit from the um, first, the left table and fruit from the second table. As I said, default is left outer join and we get uh, uh, an estimation already by Power Query that we have seven uh, out of 10 matches rules. So, but what does it mean, the left outer join? Left outer join means that uh, I want to get for all the uh, records in my left table, I want to get the matching value from the right table. Every time we are doing a join using the user interface, we will get an additional column, this one, with some nested tables. Well, if we Click on the white space near the, uh, let me zoom in a bit. So if we click in the white table near the um, table there, we get down here a preview of the data. Here we have no preview on the, because we have no matching 
for apple, for example, but if we are going for banana, we know that in the second table, in the right table, the secret identity for banana was kept on slip. So if I go up and expand this additional column, see, this is the option that I was telling you about earlier. We don't have the possibility to aggregate the um, values whenever we are doing the merge, like in Power BI Desktop, we can only expand. I will tick the name to use the original column as prefix so we can see them better. And this is what we get, an additional uh, the query, this one, the left join, but now we have a very clear lineage. This one is depending on this and on this one. And now we can see that for our uh, 10 records that we had in our uh, left table, we only have seven matching records in the second, uh, in the right table, returning nulls for the values that are not there. So this is the first type of join and the default uh, join type that uh, we have in uh, using the user interface. And uh, for this, I will, uh, yeah, we can go into details like this and uh, explain you for each of the joins and uh, make sure that uh, we understand. So the left join is keeping all the uh, rows from the primary table to the left table and bringing any matching rows from the related table. As I wrote here, this is the default join type for function table.nestedJoin, the function that is uh, written by default by uh, our query. So if we go here on the merge query, and uh, hide this and make this step a little bit bigger. As you can see here, whenever I we are doing the join, our query is already writing for us table.nested join. Okay, now that we've... Uh, Just a couple of quickies. Um, yes, sure. Uh, Fernando said, when you next do a join, can you just show the um, the uh, little, you know, exclamation light bulb again? Because he likes that. He says it's magic. So can you re show that? I know. I know he missed it, I think. This Go one? Uh, just, you know, when you join in, it comes up with a little, um, ah, a little magic okay, okay. button. And um, it just uh, Takami was just questioning why yours this look one. more colourful. So I was explaining about that you were using it in the service. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That you were this using one. it in the service. Yeah. Fernando, this is for you. This is the suggestions that we were talking about. And uh, as you can see, even for the step that I already performed, uh, Power Query was suggesting uh, a match uh, color mapping between fruit and fruit. Even if the, the names are uh, on purpose, I let them uh, with different casing. So now that we've seen the first uh, um, join, let's move to the pre-prepared uh, uh, data flow that uh, I have. And here I have the same two tables, the fruit superpowers and the secret identity. And uh, I will just go through all the joins. This is the, the query that uh, I already performed here, the left join. And now we can go through uh, all the other ones um, without doing all the referencing and uh, waiting for all, everything to happen. So the right join. In just in a few words, the right join is just the opposite of the left join, uh, keeping all the records from the right table, bringing any matching rows from the left table. Usually, I'm not using it, to be honest, because it's just a mirrored left join. So in uh, real life, I'm not using it too much. But just to show you, on this one, I was just referencing the same fruit superpowers uh, query. I started from this one, and here on the merge, on the second step, I just chose the right outer join from here, and also matching, uh, uh, giving an indication that we have seven out of 10 
um, records uh, matching. And in the end, after expanding uh, the data, we'll see that not all of the um, not all, all of the records in the right table are present in the uh, left table, but we get the opposite uh, part showing nulls for the records in the second table where we don't have a matching record in the left table. Just as I said, I'm not using it too much, but uh, it is standard and I wanted to present it to you uh, because it's there, there might be use cases where you could use it, but uh, usually I'm just choosing the, the other, uh, the left join and uh, changing the order of the, of the tables. As I said, the right outer join is keeping all the records from the re related table from, or the right table, bringing any matching rows from the primary table. So let's move further for the full outer join. Well, full outer join is actually a combination or uh, the join type bringing all the data together from the left table uh, together with the, the ones on the right table, having everything together. And the, here, I, I just did the same thing, but in the merge step, so I was referencing the fruit superpowers, but uh, on the merge step, I just chose the full outer join. And even if I have a matching table of seven out of 13 tables, uh, records, whenever I'm expanding everything, I'm getting all the data from both tables. So check this out. I have all the records in my uh, fruit superpowers here the 10 records with their matching records in the right table. But I also have in the same table, all the data from the right table with non-matching records from the left table. There might be use cases where this type of join is needed and uh, it's, it's really important to have it. And in, theory, let's say like this, uh, or um, just to what to remember about the full outer join, it returns all rows when there is a match in either left or right table. Unmatched rows will have nulls for missing fields. Uh, think about it like this, consolidating issue logs from two different project management systems. A full outer join will list all the issues from both systems, allowing you to identify duplicates in the issues um, unique to each system for comprehensive tracking. So it's it, it can be useful in all kinds of uh, uh, scenarios, this type of join. So let's move to the next join, the inner join. I have well, used it quite joint. a few times, that, that one. It, like you say, it's quite useful when you're checking two systems to make sure that... Exactly. Yeah. Whenever so, you want to have everything in, in one place, because yeah. otherwise you would use the left anti-join and right anti-join depending on the need. Mm, mm. Well, the next type of join is the inner join. Here on inner join, I will go directly to the second step on the uh, merge step. Again, I'm getting uh, the same suggestion, having the same tables, but this time I'm using the inner join. Well, inner join is only giving me seven matching rules because inner join is doing a merge only on the common records or common fields between the two tables. And if you check this one, remember I was telling you at the beginning, uh, merge is doing for enriching, reducing, or increasing the number of records. Check this out. I'm starting from the fruit superpowers with 10 records. And whenever I'm doing a merge, I'm only having seven records here. So I'm reducing the number of records based only on the common fields here. And uh, every time I was expanding uh, the columns here, I kept the um, uh, name of the table there. So 
we have them in both tables so we know exactly what's happening usually in real life we're not doing it like this but uh, this is only for demo purposes so going to to the slides inner joints are bringing all the records from both the primary and related uh, tables bringing all the common table uh, records let's say like this so it re it's returning only the rows where there is a match in both tables and uh, as an additional uh, or a use case for this joining a table of uh, think about it like this uh, you have a table of uh, website users with a table uh, joined with a table of recent online purchases to analyze the buying behavior of users who who have made purchases. Uh, doing an inner merge uh, is excluding the users who haven't purchased, focusing the analysis only on active buyers. So uh, it can be useful in uh, all kinds of scenarios or seeing only the mat um, matches and so on. So it can have a lot of uh, a lot of good use cases, let's say like this. Then we have the left anti-join. Uh, remember when we did the left outer join with three records that were not matching? Well, the left anti-join is the specifically designed join to keep only the non-matching rows between the left table and the right table. And if we go to the merge, here, I'm just choosing, I'm doing the same uh, fruit superpowers with the secret identity, and I'm doing a left anti-join, and let me show you. Whenever you hover over one of the joints with uh, over any of the joints, you already get an, uh, an indication what that type of join is doing. So left anti-join is rows only in left. If I would go to inner join, I get only, only matching rows. So it's really, really the, the UI for this is very well thought and uh, I love it. It's much better than the Power BI desktop. And as I said, hopefully it will come it eventually in uh, Power BI desktop. So left anti-join is only keeping the rows in the left table, let's say like this. But again, as I kept only the records on the left table, here on the, um, when I'm expanding the values from the right table, of course, I had no matches, so I have nulls there. Therefore, for left and anti-join, we could already delete this column. So if I go here and delete it, it wouldn't be a problem. I kept it just to show you that we get no null no values, no null no values in the right table. So we have no matching rows there. And if we go to the um, slides, I forgot to, to mention something on the inner join, uh, but I will show you uh, earlier. Um, the inner join, coming back to inner join, is the default type for table.join. This is another function that uh, we can use inside Power Query directly in M, and I forgot to, to tell you about it because uh, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Let's say it like this. So, as I said, left anti-join is bringing only rows from the left table that dot, that that uh, don't have a matching rows in the uh, right table. Think about it uh, as a use case, identifying inventory items that uh, have not been sold in the past uh, year by comparing the full inventory list, the left table with sales records, the right table. The left anti-join will list items with no sales, uh, helping in the deciding about discontinuing or discontinuing uh, products, let's say like this. It can help uh, also in uh, finding mismatches between the two tables and keeping only the unique uh, records to the um, left table. And then we have the last one, the last type of join using uh, UI, the right anti-join, which is the exact same thing with the left anti-join, but using the right uh, table. So it's keeping only the records that are uh, not matching 
that are available in the right table and not matching in the le left table. And if we go to the join type here uh, in the step with the merge, if I hover over it, you see rows only in right table. And this one is also, let me go out of zoom. It's returning three out of 10 uh, rows from the second table. And whenever you are doing a join, think about it like this. We are starting from 10 records. We are doing a right out of join. And you would think, well, I have a problem. I only have one record in the end. What's happening? Actually, in this nested table, we have the unique records to the second to the right uh, data. And this is not uh, uh, actually a problem. Whenever we are expanding it, <clears throat> we get the data from the second table. And uh, if I go to the slides, as I said, right anti joints is bringing only records from the right table that don't have a matching record from the left table. And uh, think about it like this, finding software licenses, the right table that are not assigned to any employee in uh, your company's uh, directory, which is the left table. This can help tracking unused license that can be reassigned or canceled to reduce costs. You can have all kinds of uh, use cases directly as it is, but just as left uh, outer join and right join, I'm not using it too much as it is. I'm just reversing the tables and I'm using the left anti join. Usually, let's say it like this. Let me go back to the presentation. As I said, we can have an additional uh, type of join. Uh, constructed, let's say, uh, let's say it like this, constructed uh, join type, the full anti-join. Well, the full anti-join is actually the combination between the left outer join, so only, only records in the left table with the right anti-join, but it's not an actual merge, this is an append. And uh, let me show you how I did it. So for this one, the full anti-join I'm just referencing the left anti-join and uh, appending a query, the right anti-join here, having a list with only the differences. So think about it as the reverse of inner join. Inner join is keeping everything which is common. The full anti-join is bringing um, all the records that are not matching in, uh, in the two tables. Sometimes it can be very useful, uh, and this is a kind of filtered uh, full, full out of join only with the non-matching records. Yes, we could do it uh, also like this, but uh, usually I'm appending the left anti-join and right anti-join uh, between two lists to see only the differences. Let's say it like this. And now let's go to the, the other two type of joins. And let me show you this one, the left join semi. Well, for this type of join, I just um, referenced the superpowers again and did the join directly. Yeah, let me show you one thing here. On the any type of join, you saw me here, there is a cog, right? Whenever I'm right-clicking and uh, editing the settings, I have a user interface for it. If I go here to left semi-join, I don't have this cog anymore because there is no option to do it uh, or to, to write it directly using UI, let's say it like this. And here, I'm just using the same formula with the table.nested join here and the table.nested join is using actually uh, two tables and the columns that uh, needs to be, uh, we, we are doing the join by. And in the end, we have the join kind. Here, I had to write it manually, the left semi join, I had to write it manually. And I think it would be easier like this to see it. 
this is the portion that we are interested in. Uh, zoom it is not working anymore. Oh, yeah, it is in the end. Control Z and go like this. So table done nested join is the function that Power Query is writing for us whenever we are doing the UI. And this table is taking two parameters uh, as tables. So the left table and the right table is taking the columns uh, that we are we want to do the match by. And uh, of course I took it. We said something about uh, zoom it before, right? So here, this is the, the portion that I had to write it manually. So actually only this part is the only thing that I'm uh, modifying after I'm doing the UI version. Because usually I'm still doing the UI merges regardless using the default. And then I'm just modifying the uh, the last portion, the join kind, the left semi-join. And what is left semi-join doing? Well, as I said, uh, merge operations are um, supporting query folding. Let's say it like this. And let's go to the left join and show you what this is happening. So whenever we are doing a right click on the, even on the merge query, and we view the data source, the, the query itself, the SQL query that Power Query is writing for us. This is the SQL query that Power Query is writing for us. So select table from as a table, and uh, after expanding it, we see the join itself, the left outer join, translated by Power by uh, Power Query Online into SQL, right? But in the case of left uh, join semi, if we are checking the SQL query that was written here, we see a difference. We don't see, we don't actually see a join because left semi join is not doing a left outer or inner join, a SQL join. is only checking, so the left semi join is only checking if the values in the left table are having a match in the right table, but without bringing additional data from uh, from the second table. This is the big difference between a left, uh, left join and left semi join. Whenever I'm doing a left semi join, do you remember that here in the nested tables, we would have matches, right? With the left, uh, normal left join. Here, with left semi-join and right semi-join, we never get uh, matches out of it because the purpose of the join, of this join type, is only to check whether we have matches or not. And uh, you will see um, in a little bit later in the demo, this can be really, really helpful in whenever you have cases with uh, big tables where you don't want to get everything from the other table, you only want to check whether that specific uh, data exists in the other in the other table or not. And uh, moving to the slides, as I said, uh, the left semi join is uh, keeping or um, checking. Um, returns all the rows from the left table where one or more matches are found in the right table, but only including the columns from the left table. Essentially, it filters the left table to include only the rows that have corresponding matches in the right table. Uh, uh, you you will see it in the, in the demo That's later. That's perfectly use case. explained. It, you're explaining it really clearly. That's well, brilliant. Thank you. Mm. It, it took me a while to understand it and uh, mm. make it uh, understandable for others because in my head it was clear, but uh, make it uh, clearly for others, it, it's not that easy all the time. Let's say it like this. Yeah, you're doing a brilliant job. And then we have the right semi join. 
Well, and I'll show you uh, practically, but since we are in um, uh, in PowerPoint already, this is the exact same thing, but for the right table. So um, the right semi joint returns all the rows from the right table where one or more matches are found in the left table, but only including columns from the right table. Uh, it effectively filters the right table to include only rows that are having uh, that have matching keys in the left table. Um, think about the uh, products that uh, have been ordered. Uh, you have an order table, the left table, and the product catalog, the right table. You want to identify which products have been uh, ordered at least once. And uh, by performing a right semi-join on the product ID between the orders and product table, you get a list of products from the catalog that appear in the orders. This provides insight into product popularity without including the details. That's the purpose, not getting all the details, only thinking that uh, the, the details or checking if the details are there. And uh, let me show it uh, to you here in the in practice, just like uh, the other one, I just I did a nested join. Uh, with the left outer, the default one. And then on the join kind, I modified it as a <coughs> right semi. And uh, basically, uh, just like uh, with the right anti-join, whenever we are doing this, from the left table, we have nulls because we don't want to get any detail out of it. We only want to see which um, secret identities uh, uh, are matching here. And then after expanding them, I'm getting only those ones. Of course, I kept all the names here and uh, I removed all the steps so we can see it easier for the demo, but it, it wouldn't be very, very um, helpful to um, keep in, in real life. Well, uh, as I showed you already in, uh, in the um, um, PowerPoint, we can have um, a join type, let's say like this, a left semi join. Think about it like this, in a single step, we can have everything. And uh, this is the power query for it. Uh, of course, I have some additional comments and so on, but this single step query falls and it's really, really helpful in all kinds of uh, uh, scenarios where you don't want to spend too much time or have too many uh, um, steps there. And it's easier to, to write it like this. Uh, and then let me show you something else. Here in uh, not this one, let me show you one of this. If I go to one of the table.nested join steps and I'm deleting uh, everything that was after uh, table dot uh, join, and if I'm pressing enter, I'm getting a list of details, the parameters that um, uh, Power Query actually is the documentation itself. In Power Query Online, it looks like this. In Power Query Desktop, it looks a little bit different. And if we we still have some 15 minutes, I I want to show it to you in Power BI Desktop. This is the backup, so I have everything uh, with uh, all the tables created as M tables here. So even if uh, I wouldn't have internet, this file works. Yeah, but brilliant. I wanted to, to show Just you a this. Quick question, yes. and you were doing brilliantly for time. Um, Aurora said, how did you discover that the joins weren't um, in the UI? I'm following the blogs. Yeah, it was they were announced in uh, March or April this year, Aurora. Yeah, it's not something that uh, somebody's dreaming. It's just a matter of uh, staying informed. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough because I needed it. Yeah. So I I'm subscribed to the Fabric blog, and uh, uh, I'm having all the blogs that uh, are announced are coming on on my email and I'm staying up to date or at least I'm trying. Hmm. Here, I did the same thing. 
this is Power BI Desktop with the same function, table.nestedjoin. See here, I have all the parameters, you have all the documentation for any Power Query uh, function. If you are deleting everything um, before the parentheses, you get the documentation. And here you have something very interesting. Let me move back to this and uh, show you this part, the join kind. Here in Power Query Online, we have all the join kinds as numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As Power Query is uh, zero based, it's actually the eight different join types as they are, but it's not very helpful to see them like this. But if we go here in Power Query, uh, in Power BI Desktop, the join kinds, let me zoom in a bit. This is the same join types. And as you can see, zero is inner join, um, one is left outer, and so on. Left semi, right semi. And speaking of joints, and right, um, left semi and right semi are not only in Power BI Desktop or Power Query Online, they are also available in Excel. So whenever you are doing joints in Excel, they are working. <clears throat> uh, but, we can also use them. And uh, think about it, I already tried in uh, in um, in one of my uh, trials, I did try to create a custom function uh, for simple joints, making the left semi and right semi available using the UI and uh, having uh, everything visible. It's working, but it's not 100% uh, um, presentable, let's say it like this. As soon as I have it presentable, I will publish a, a blog on it. But using, uh, knowing this, we can have also, uh, we can use those numbers. We don't have the join kind uh, and uh, the names. We can use the numbers here in, in the function, join. I'm not having the join kind inner or left semi or so on. We can uh, just change the numbers. Uh, remember, zero was inner join, right? If I'm changing this, everything works. And I'm only getting the seven uh, common um, seven common uh, records. As far as I can see, we only have 11 more minutes, so I will have to skip some of the uh, demos. Uh, I want to show you one thing, though before going to the left semi and right semi, uh, the big tables. Uh, I have two additional or two different uh, tables this time, a table with some Power Query wizards and uh, their specialities, and another um, table with uh, Power Query uh, wizard projects and their description. And I want to do a match here uh, between the um, wizards and their projects. How can we do it? Well, now we know, right? We just do a left outer join or a, a left semi join, or basically we need a left outer join. And this is what I did here. So here, if I'm doing a left outer join, come on, edit settings. Based on the first name, I'm doing a left outer join. I'm getting nine out of nine records and it should be okay, right? I can, now I know how to do a VLOOKUP inside Power Query, it should work. Well, expanding the, the projects. Well, check this out. How many records did we have? Nine, right? Whenever I'm expanding, how many do I have? 11, how come? Well, if we go back here, and go on this table, on uh, this row, for whenever I did the join based on the first name with the uh, Power Query Wizard projects, for pivot, first name pivot, I got three different matches from the, the, the other table, from the right table. And whenever I'm expanding everything, all three records were expanded. Well, sometimes we might need that and we might uh, want that but not all the time so 
In this case, I didn't want that. This is why I did a different type of join. Well, actually the join kind is the same, but I'm not using a single column. I'm using two columns. So I'm using first name matching with first name and last name matching with last name. Of course, the uh, join kind is the left outer. So I don't have a problem. And this time I'm getting nine out of nine records. And whenever I'm doing uh, the expand, this time I have the, <clears throat> the correct data because joints are not only based on one column. You can do joints based on uh, one, two, three, or all the columns in a table. It depends on what you want. It doesn't matter the uh, name of the column, but it matters the data type. So whenever you are doing joints, the names of the columns are not important, but the type of the column, you cannot join a date type or a date column with a text column. So the join, the data type, uh, it's important. Uh, we also have some, um, I will, um, just in the, in the interest of time, so I will not have time to go through all the um, all the demos here, but the file that uh, I showed you, I will provide it to you and you can make it available for everybody. I have some additional uh, examples uh, using um, fuzzy matches and so on. You don't need to be connected to anything. All the data in the file are um, self-contained and you can play along with uh, there are comments and uh, you can see all the details there. Uh, I wanted to show you one more thing, the cross join, the type of cross join and the possibilities that uh, are available with cross join. I have two additional tables here. One with uh, Power BI reports with five reports and uh, another table with uh, Power BI report viewers. Uh, my purpose here is to assign all the viewers for all the reports. So no, for each report, I need to assign all the users. How can I do it using merge? It's very simple. I'm just adding an additional column. So I'm just adding a custom column like this one with a value of one, let's say. It doesn't matter the value. For each of the tables, I'm adding an additional column, right? And then I'm doing a merge, this one, between these two tables on this custom column that I'm having. And therefore, for each of the, uh, not the expand here, for each of the ones in my left table, I'm getting all the matching rows in the second table, having all the uh, viewers in the second table and the same for the second one and the same for the third one. And whenever I'm doing uh, the expand, I have all the combinations of Power BI uh, reports and um, viewers. Uh, one additional thing that I wanted to, to show you in the demo and then we can uh, close so, uh, with the um, PowerPoint. I have two tables, uh, one with sales, with 1,000 records here, and one with customers, which has 1.4 million records. So I have a long list of customers and uh, only a subset of uh, sales. If I would like to keep only the sales um, <clears throat> that are having a matching customer there and put some additional filters, let's say I want to have the sales in um, um, Europe or sales in uh, France, I could just go with uh, um, an inner join between the uh, sales and customers, right? Expand the customers and then putting some filters. So I'm selecting the rows where continent is Europe and country is France. So this is the normal uh, way of doing joints or, but having the left semi join, we can do it better and we can use conditional uh, joints. And let me show you this. <clears throat> I'm just referencing sales. And in this step, I'm doing a table.nested join with source as the first table on customer key. But instead of customers, 
I'm not doing customers. I'm doing a selection of the customers, keeping for each of the continent Europe. So I'm doing a um, selection of the customers, putting a condition only for um, continent Europe. And I could also uh, add an additional column here and country uh, equals France. And using left semi-join, I'm only checking if I'm having this data in the customers where customers is actually already filtered. So based on this, uh, using left semi-join, I'm only doing two steps out of everything without the need of uh, uh, bringing anything from the, the customers. See, Can you show that again? Said, Rory said the same. You filtered the table before the join. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm doing the join and I'm filtering the table directly in the join. I'm only nice. selecting rows and show me, let me show you here. Here, the filter is at the end. I'm doing a table dot select rows from the previous yeah, um, table. Uh, Tanya, so can you paste the code in the chat so we can see yes, it? Yes, sure. This one. Nice. Uh, I think this is the one, the important one. Yeah, but I have a use case, a very use, good use case for um, customers or the right semi-join. Think about it like this. I have 1.4 million records of customers. How can I see only the customers? How can I check only the custom, which are my customers in France easily? Well, I'm I'm not starting from the 1.4 millions. I'm starting from the sales table, which is only 1,000 records. And then I'm doing a right semi-join, filtering the customers directly on continent Europe and country France, having a single table here and removing every other column and expanding it. I have 28 records and everything folds. So if I'm checking here, everything is folding. So I, I'm not doing all the steps. I'm using the right semi-join this way, uh, pre-filtering my biggest table, keeping it on the right and using the right semi-join to do um, the, um, the right semi-join. Let's move back to the slides and uh, do the closing. Uh, because I can see that uh, we are a bit late, a bit over time. What we've seen, an overview of the um, join and the, the merges, the join kinds, some extra joints, fuzzy match, we didn't get the chance to see it live, but you'll have it in the, in the file that uh, I'm providing and some demos. This is a really good cheat sheet uh, created by Rick de Groot. And uh, I've seen the... Uh, podcast that you had so I loved it <laughs> and uh, I wanted awesome. to mention Rick because all the, the all the join types are here in a single page and uh, uh, are really easy to follow let's say like this but not knowing the the join types can create a lot of potential problems so you we can have data duplication and inaccurate results data loss performance degradation mismatch data types we can have a lot of problems as long as we don't understand the the matches mm -hmm. and we can have unintended cross joins some strategies to uh, mitigate the the problems is understanding the joint types and uh, this is probably one of the reasons you are here Validate the joint conditions, and this is especially uh, uh, important when doing fuzzy uh, matching. So whenever you, you will go through the examples with fuzzy matching, always check the results. Data profiling or using unique identifiers. Whenever you have uh, joints with lots of lots of data, you can always um, uh, test your, the joints with sample data. You can monitor the performance and see the, the documentation. Some things to remember, 
as I said, uh, we need to have the same type on the matching columns, uh, the same number of columns in left table and right table. Um, merging on multiple columns, the order matters. So not only the data type, the order that you are doing matters. Uh, duplicates in the lookup table, we're having duplicates in the lookup table can um, um, can get give you uh, additional records. If you are doing intentional, it's okay. But uh, if it's not intentional, uh, you can have problems. Uh, fuzzy matching. One another thing to, it's important to mention on fuzzy matching. It breaks folding. Always uh, pay attention on fuzzy matching. It breaks folding and uh, uh, fuzzy matching works only for text. Let's say like this. And as I said, uh, always check the results. I am trying to avoid as much as I can fuzzy matching. Yeah. I try not but, to uh, wherever possible. Sometimes, sometimes so. you have to do it at least to to go to a better place than you were at the beginning. Power Query is case sensitive, so whenever you are doing uh, uh, all kind of things, uh, you can have uh, problems or mismatches. Think about it uh, if you have, um, I don't know, ABC capitals on the left table and ABC uh, lower cases on the right table, you will not, Power Query will not find a match there. Uh, as I shown you at the beginning, it's a matter of choice whether you use merge or merge as a new query. So it matters. Usually for me, it's just referencing the left table and do a merge there. And uh, adding, this is another important thing, adding index columns breaks folding. So whenever you are adding uh, index columns, just like I did the uh, well, I had one example uh, with indexes, but uh, we didn't get to, to go there yet. But um, whenever you are adding uh, uh, indexes, it breaks folding. So pay attention on this. Here are some resources. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you again, Sue, for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to present. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'm still here for a few more minutes if Sue is letting us for some Q&A. Do you know you've said that eight times during the session? Eight yeah, times. Um, thank you, Christian. That was brilliant. It was an excellent uh, session and you really um, managed to explain the concept of merging very clearly and in great mm -hmm. detail. So there's lots and lots of feedback in, in the chat about thank you so much and, you know, really excellent technical session. You've even got Alan Murray oh. here calling you a legend, which is just fabulous. Uh, and Alan, I think um, it's actually the first one uh, with the courage to invite me to speak at his user group back in 2021. Oh. And thank you. Oh, so you've done superbly. It was brilliant, really interesting. And I, you know, explaining the semi joins was a really nice, um, nice way. So I think it, it, you know, regardless of what level you are with Power Query, there was something for everyone in that one. So, um, and I know how Hopefully. much time you put into it for the session at FabCon. So it seemed really remiss not to not to share it even wider because it was an excellent session so thank you very, thank you much. very much before we start chatting everyone because we've got a couple of minutes next week we've got michael kowalski coming in he's on the microsoft cat team um he is phenomenally brilliant and he's created some excellent python notebooks which have, have really opened uh, our eyes to what you can do with Python in Microsoft Fabric. Even if you've got a small business, there are ways that you can really get Fabric working for you with not a lot of money. So um, because he's in is Israel, he's um, requested that we do it at lunchtime. So hopefully it's one o'clock UK time. So hopefully most people should be able to, um, to come along. But um, Fernando, I know it's going to be really difficult for you, so um, I apologise in advance. So over to you then, Christian and everyone. I will stop recording now, um, but thank you ever so much. Sure. Brilliant. So we've got a couple of minutes if any 